הרי יד האיש תחת אבן השישי הגיע ליד אז טראמפ הרי אין פסטה הזנה בקודון נשאירי פאנצי כנסי אשתות לטוב שהיא קודה איס They'd like to hear from all of us as to what we believe, what should also they be looking at besides what they gave us. I want to commend them for doing this. It should have been done years and years ago, but it's here now. And I really want to thank uh, the Water Group uh, Michelle and all of you who are here doing this. You've taken, I believe this is one of the most important steps that all of us need to be aware of. Yes, we want jobs, we want economic development, we want farming, we want more sheep, more cattle, more horses. We want all of these things. We want economic development. All of that thing, all those things that we want, we cannot get it unless we have water. What I get, na nishitin. What I get, adole, denolt ish, na niyesh, na ta, tohoda te, benashe. You cannot have that if you don't have water. So I believe this is one of the most important meetings, initiative that got started here by our own educated young men and women. And I want to thank you for that. I have some suggestions regarding what's going on here. One of them is that, you know, we're dealing with the outside group. We have a, a reservation about the size of the state of West Virginia, a big reservation. It's not just a reservation, it's a nation. They may call it reservation, but so far as we are concerned, it's a nation. It's not even a state. This is a nation. Arizona is not a nation. It's just a state part of the United States. We are a nation. And let's not forget that. So there are things that we need to stand on. Number one, long before anyone was ever here, Pelagana or whoever they are, Tuapulye, Lede, Hadeshi, Hajine Holyede, Ade Bahanet, water is the thing that brought us through these four worlds up to now. When we got to this land, water was all over. We had to make an agreement with the water. They receded and then it dried up. And that's how we got this piece of land that we have. After that development started, female rivers, male rivers, We have songs for different Waters. We use water for a lot of things. That's ours. Long before Columbus ever thought of coming here. 
We need to know that. We need to tell everybody that. Where were you around the year 1000? They didn't know if we exist, but we were here. And their own law, for Lagana, for Bezani, and the, whoever was here first using the water can have that water as much as they can put to beneficial use. Ne? Yet, what are they doing to us? They can have all the water they need for, for their home, for their lawn, for their golf courses, or their swimming pool. So if you compare how much water did they use off our Navajo Nation, and I see we only use 178 gallon per day. And that's what we're trying to get. I guess so. Uh, we use that 178 gallon per day to justify how much water we are going to get. I don't think we should do that. I think there should be a common figure for everyone. How much water are they using in Phoenix? How much water are they using in Tucson, Flagstaff? We should use the same amount of water that they are using. So any settlement negotiation should not be racial. This is racial when they say, you Indians, you stay dirty, you don't need a swimming pool, you don't need too many showers, don't take a shower every day. Then kiss me that way you could only use a 178 gallon a day. But they use probably a thousand gallon a day. One figure should be used for all human beings, whether they're in Phoenix or they're in Tuba City or wherever they are. So I'd like to make that suggestion. One figure. If you want to save water, go down to 178 gallons a day, just like we do. We'll save water. But if you can't do that, if you're going to use 500 gallons a day, we will claim 500 gallons a day for Navajo people. So they could have enough water. I think they'll understand. The other thing is that settlement, as you projected here, is probably appear to be more quick and faster than going to court. That's what I hear from the explanation. Well, the federal government, if they're part of the agreement, have no appreciation for time. Give you an example. We made an agreement with the federal government in the state of New Mexico to give some of our water rights around Farmington, Colorado because New Mexico wanted some water. This was 1955, about 60 years, 70 years ago. Agreement was made that there we, we would give them some of our water rights in return. The federal government in New Mexico would build a dam, give us so much water every day and also clear 110,000 acres of land. That was the agreement. Well, agreement was signed. We gave our water rights to New Mexico. They built the dam. They built a water line that flows into the 
Rio Grande. So they're using the water for the past 30 or 40 years. How about us? Where are we? Navajo Indian irrigation was to be built. You know, today, this very day, we only probably have about 60% of that project completed. They have not even completed 110,000 acres. W-O-G. Look how long it takes. So if we depend on federal government to do something for us on these settlement, you may not even get it for the next 100 years. So the first thing that should be done is federal government, you spend your money, you do it first before we agree to give you something. That would be a way I would negotiate with these people because it's very important that we have this fund also, the population. Yes, population like us here might be what you've written down. But what I see a hundred years from now would be a population like this, not too many, but our kids and our grandkids and their kids will be mixed breed. They may be part Hopi, they probably be white Pelagana or white this or that. We'll have probably the population of a hundred years from now here, depending on how well we develop this nation, will probably be close to over a million people. So, in any of these negotiations, I believe it'd be best to do what you're doing now. It's very important to work with the people, let them understand water. All we know at this time is this. I bought this over here at Trading Post. Two dollars, one pint. <laughs> Look how many million, billion, billion pints are going down that San Juan, Colorado, little Colorado, being used by all those people, and they're not giving us one penny for it. Two dollars, eight of these makes one gallon. Eight times equals a gallon. Okay, eight times two dollars. That's sixteen dollars a gallon. One silver, one gallon. So not only do they owe us a lot of money for using our water for all this time, but we should, in their settlement, have a way to say that whatever amount of water we don't use now, you pay for it. Well, we're going to be very nice. We're not going to charge $2. We may only be charging Ten cents a gallon does give you billions of dollars a year for our water rights, our, sh our share of the water rights that they are using. So, like I said, water is important. I hear people say, toy is not that water is love. Yes, it is. It, we all need jobs. We all need to have a horse, sheep, or cattle, whatever we have. They all need water. 
Our children needs water every day. So it's important that we believe and practice what we say. Water is life. And I really appreciate all of you for being here and telling us, the people, what is going on. And I'm sure you're going to you get a lot of support if they all understand what it is. Up to now, I guess, most of us, all we knew is that we need this every day. Our children, our babies, as twist on it, they need this every day. Otherwise, no life. Even in Tuhogi, yes, we need homes. We need good hospitals. We need good education, schools, good social programs. But without water, can't even have that. Tuhogi ani be'inate. Thank you very much. Stay involved. Don't just listen and then go home. They need you. They need your input. They need to know what you're thinking so that all of us together as Navajos, we can get what we truly believe belongs to us. Their own Pelacana's water law William Stockton, you mentioned that earlier, says, whoever was here first using that water is entitled to whatever amount of water they can put to beneficial use. Whatever they can use to beneficial use. That's the law, water law. Maybe they changed it since I left. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, all of you, for being here. And, uh, My boss here, one day, says, I think you said enough. <laughs> I can't hit. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> Census numbers, I guess, uh, in Window Rock. But we have a lot more people here every year, just on this side of the reservation, about 10 million tourists come through here. And they all use water. Some of them spend two or three days and they go on. And they're projecting the next 10 years there'll be 20 million tourists coming through here on western side. They, need, they will need water, a place to shower, and uh, go on their tour trips. So I think that need to be considered as part of the water usage. Plus, like I said before, there are uses that that they are not there now because of a lot of restrictions. That's commercial. We only have so many hotels here, and uh, not too many stores. It's not going to stay that way, no matter what we do. It's going to grow. And uh, so the commercial industrial sector should uh, would be increasing. They need water. So I, that should be included in your discussion as to how much water that uh, the Navajo Nation needs. And it really uh, makes me sick when how much water does individual home or person in Phoenix use? How many acre feet? 
how many gallons they should consider the same amount of the, how much water they use here. Otherwise, you're getting into uh, racism. You guys, Indians, Navajos, you only need to take a shower once a week, and yet they take a shower twice a day, maybe. So can they agree to one figure for them and for us in a way of dividing how much water they can have and we have, instead of uh, us considered to be lower. As a matter of fact, I go back to the uh, water law that the United States is using, the Winters Doctrine. Now, is that being considered in any way because that water law says whoever was here first using the water gave up the federal government stole our water rights. It's just like any one of us may have a hundred head of sheep. Somebody comes in, stole all that hundred sheep. Next morning, they discovered the corral is empty. Hundred sheep is gone. Soon you found out who did it. So you go over there and say, hey, you stole my hundred sheep, those are my brain, those are my earmarks. That's my sheep. You want to negotiate and say, and the guy said, well, yeah, it's your sheep, but I stole it. And uh, I can't just give you five of those sheep back. They keep 95. That's what I see the state, seven states are doing, including the federal government. They want us to sit with knee pads on and say, please, you stole my 100 sheep, can't give me back about five of them. Is that what we're saying? You know, the, the truth has to come out. They should know what happened and they should understand. I see Western movies, somebody steals cattle. Well, they go find out who did it. They shoot and they hang him. They get all their cattle back. We didn't do that. We just saying, this is how much water we could put to beneficial use. You can have whatever we don't need and do whatever you want to with it. And we're not going to punish you for stealing our water. You know that, uh, to me, uh, it's just, it's not Navajo to just kneel down and say, give me back only four or five sheep. The rest of 98 you stole, you can keep it. Don't even have to pay for it. So they argument to make sure we get the, the amount of water that we are entitled to. It's their law. They made the law, Winter's Doctrine, saying whoever was here first has the first choice of how much water they need to put the beneficial use. And we, you folks are doing that. You're showing how much water we need for this, 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 and that. So that we're going according to their water law. And yet we get the water master here saying, no, we're only going to have this much. Navajo should only get 178 
can of water a day. Well, I think I, I read somewhere that an average person in Phoenix uses about 400 gallons of water a day. One person. So, we need to be fair. With they need to be fair with us. And you stand your ground and say, we want to do that. Is there any argument? I don't think so. So I appreciate what you guys are doing. And this is good, very good. And you're going across the Navajo Nation so that the rest of the people can understand and they can they have input, I'm sure. And by knowing and all of us together, they may even have some suggestions as to how to get more water than what they want to give you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it.